Role models, we all have them. Growing up, was there a particular role model that stood out to you? Did you want to be like that individual? In this new series by our lead pastor, Fred Young, he begins a conversation about being like Jesus. If we want to use biblical language, we could ask ourselves this question. What does it take to be a disciple? Jesus invites us to follow him and to learn from him. So please join us in this new series as we learn to be like Jesus. Well, welcome everyone to uh, a new series that we are beginning uh, with our C3 groups entitled Like Jesus. We're, we're going to spend uh, four weeks uh, discussing this topic and then uh, sometime in the future we'll come back to it because we could discuss this for a long, long time when you talk about uh, the topic of becoming like Jesus. Uh, back in the 90s, um, Michael Jordan was the most popular basketball player and one of the most popular people on the planet. And if you remember this at all, Gatorade hired Michael Jordan to do uh, commercials for him. And the kids would gather around and they would sing a song, I want to be like Mike. And, and if basketball is your purpose in life, if learning how to shoot and pass and dribble a basketball, if that's your goal in life, if that's what you want to accomplish, then there was nobody better than to be like Michael Jordan. He would be the one you would choose to follow and learn from if basketball were your goal. Well, I think we understand this. As followers of Christ, we have a much higher calling. We have the calling to be like Christ. Wow, that's no small task, is it? I mean, to think about it, to be like Jesus Christ. And yet, that's exactly what Jesus invites us to do. Jesus invites us to come and learn from Him and to live with Him and to be like Him. Let me read this to you from Matthew 11, verses 29 and 30. And, and this is going to come from the message. And so it's going to sound a little different than what you've uh, maybe... Uh, grown up, if you have grown up in church and you're familiar with this verse, it's going to sound a little different, but it's really refreshing. I, I really enjoy the way Eugene Peterson paraphrases these verses. Listen to this. Jesus is speaking. He says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. What a great statement. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Now listen to these words. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I love that statement. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Then he says this, keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Jesus invites all of us to come and follow him and learn from him and uh, wow, what an incredible invitation. In your notes, let's go. Because uh, we just got a few minutes and we want to cover a lot in these lessons here uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, observation number one, becoming like Jesus is God's plan for all of us. Becoming like Jesus, this is God's plan for every single one of us. Uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 29 says this, For God knew His people in advance, His people being those who chose to receive by faith His Son, Jesus Christ. We understand we are His people. God knew His people in advance. Uh, wow, in eternity past, God knew who was going to receive Him and accept Him. And the Bible says He chose them to become like His Son. That's God's plan for every single believer. Now, when it says that we're going to become like His Son, obviously we're not going to become like His Son outwardly. 
He's not saying, I'm going to change you outwardly so that you physically look like Jesus looked. Obviously, he's talking about something that's inward. I want you to become like Jesus on the inside. And then he says this, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. He's going to be the first one. And then the rest of you are going to come behind him and you're going to become like him. He's number one. The rest of you follow, and you become like Christ. What an incredible plan God has for all of us to become like Jesus. Now, here's what we need to understand. Now, why, while we're here on this earth, we can participate with God in this plan. We participate with God in His plan to conform us into the image of His Son. It's not just passive. We don't just sit around and go, okay, God, do your work. We participate with Him. And, and, and here's the promise. When you become like Jesus, you discover life, true life, what John referred to as eternal life. Now, observation number two is this. Becoming like Jesus requires surrender. And uh, that's difficult for most of us. Uh, I think I've said this in the past in our worship services on Sunday morning that surrender is not one of those words that when you hear it, it produces within you positive emotions. It usually produces within us negative emotions. This idea of, of, uh, of surrender, it's very similar to the word submit or submission. The word submission does not produce in most people positive emotions. We equate surrender with losing. We equate surrender with giving up. Uh, we, we equate surrender with waving the white flag. Uh, when I was a kid, I had older brothers, and, and when we would wrestle, they would make me say the word uncle. So if you said uncle, it's, it's like similar to I surrender, I give up. And most of us, when we think of surrender, we, we think of something very, very negative. Yet, let me read to you what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24. Jesus said this, then Jesus said to his disciples, and wouldn't that be us, right? We're his disciples, we're his followers, we're his learners. If anyone wants to be my follower, that's what we're talking about. Following Christ, learning how to be like Christ, Jesus said, if you want to be my follower, here's what you have to do. You must. This isn't optional. It's not optional. You must turn from your selfish ways. That's surrender. You can't just live life for yourself. There has to be this turning from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. In other words, you've got to give up your life. You've got to surrender. That's exactly what he's saying. Um, I think for most of us, this conjures up, if you will, images of like pain, doesn't it? It's like this whole idea then just brings up this pain and this suffering. And by the way, following Christ, we all know this, it could include pain and suffering even to the point of death. We understand that. But observation number three is this. This kind of surrender that's required, this kind of surrender that's required to follow Christ results from trust. It, it, it results from trusting the one that you're surrendering to. You have to believe. If you're going to give up your life to follow Christ, then you've got to believe that Jesus is more valuable than anything else the world has to offer. That He is more valuable. In other words, you, you've got to believe that if I'm going to give up my life, it has to, in a sense, be a bargain. Have you ever thought of that? Well, I think that's exactly what Jesus said when He was on earth. In, in Matthew 13, Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven. And here's what He said. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. Let's just say it this way. Let's just put it in terms that we can recognize a little bit. You're walking through a field, you discover a box, inside that box is a hundred 
million dollars in cash. Not bad, is it? Hundred million would just take away, how many of you think most, hundred million dollars would take away most of your pain? I mean, we kind of think that. I mean, $100 million is the answer for everything. I would have no more struggles if I just had $100 million. This guy walks through, he finds this treasure hidden in the field. In his excitement, because if we found $100 million, we'd be excited. In his excitement, he hid it again, sold everything he owned to get enough money to go buy that field. Again, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. We will never be true followers of Christ until we are willing to give up everything to get the treasure hidden in the field. He's the treasure in the field. He's the life. That's it. You see, we go into this saying, oh, if you surrender and you follow Jesus, it's, it's going to be pain and the suffering. No, no, no. It's the treasure hidden in the field. It's life. It's everything you've ever dreamed of. And, but you've got to be willing to sell, what was it? Everything in order to get that. This, is, this kind of surrender requires an incredible amount of trust. Look at this verse uh, in Luke chapter 9, verse 62. But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Have you ever heard that verse? Have you ever heard of that and thought, wow, what's he talking about? Jesus is simply saying, you cannot be my disciple, not because I won't let you, but because you'll never do it. If you keep looking back, if you keep wondering, what, I, what is it that I've left behind? Is that more valuable or is this more valuable? If you're really not sure, Jesus is saying, I'm just telling you something. You're never going to be able to truly follow me, not really. You're not going to truly be my disciple. I'm going to tell you this. This is, really, this is really some serious, tough teaching, to be honest with you. Because Jesus is simply saying, it's not going to happen. Not because I won't let you. You're just never going to be able to do it. You cannot do it. Be a disciple of mine and wonder about, is that back there more valuable than Jesus? We've got to see Jesus as the treasure hidden in the field. You say, well, what do I need to do? I would begin right now. I'd begin tonight. I would make it a matter of prayer and say, would you show me, Lord, show me the beauty and the goodness of Christ. Reveal it to me. Every day let me grow in knowing Him and His beauty and His goodness. Number four in your notes, the key is not trying harder to be like Jesus. That's not what I'm trying to tell you tonight. It's growing in our relationship with Him. Now, listen, uh, you've heard me say this before. There's nothing wrong with effort. God's not opposed to effort. We have to put forth effort. Uh, you can refer to them as certain disciplines or habits in our life. Uh, I, I hope, I encourage you if you don't, but I hope you have certain habits of stu Bible study. I hope you spend time in the Word of God. I, I hope you have habits of prayer uh, habits of confession, habits of, of coming together, being in a group, obviously, uh, habits of worship, all of these things help us grow in our relationship with Christ. But they in and of themselves are not the key. Those things just help discipline our bodies, help discipline ourselves to focus on our relationship with Christ because He's the key. I love what Jesus said. It's recorded in John 5, 39 and 40, and he said this to the religious people, people who were extremely religious. And they also prayed and fasted and gave. They did a lot of stuff like that. But here's what Jesus said. You search the scriptures because you think they give you eternal life. The kind of life John refers to that kingdom life as eternal life. He said, you think they're going to give you eternal life, but the scriptures point to me. Yet you refuse to come to me and receive this life. The life we're talking about comes as we grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. So observation number five is the more intimate we become with Jesus, the more we will become like him. That makes sense, doesn't it? Isn't that pretty simple? The closer you get to Christ the more you're going to become like Him. 
Did you ever, maybe when you were a kid, maybe it was a sibling, an older brother, an older sister, maybe there was somebody at school that you really admired and you kind of hung around them, you spent some time with them and you emulated them. Maybe you talked like them, you walked like them. You just tried to just do whatever they did because they were cool and you wanted to be like them. And Jesus is just saying, I'm inviting you to come hang out with me. And I want you to learn from me to become like me. That growing relationship with Christ is what helps us become like him. So my encouragement to you all is this. Decide today. Seriously make a decision today. I want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to be a follower of Christ and I want to learn what that means. I'm willing to discover what it means to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God of all glory, save